Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Enigmatica 6, Spaghetti Mode, where everything is so entangled and convoluted that I don't know where to begin. Anyways, how are you guys doing today? How's life? We're going on a trip. They spawn every 5 minutes, or maybe they just didn't despawn. Anyhow, I don't really know how our miserable life is going to be today, but at least we know how to start it. Apiaries. Last episode we did manage to make a tier 1 apiary, and I have already prepared a flat area for it. So let us get started. So an apiary is a 7x7x6 seven by seven by multi-block structure, we need to have the apiary block, and we also need to have an apiary storage. We click on the apiary block, and we validate. You have the storage block, you idiot. <laughs> I don't know, does it have to be one block higher? Yes, apparently. You know, in Skybees, this used to be on the ground. But it's okay, the first bee that we're going to have is going to be the Sudi bee, which is going to give us coal and bitter. We should also not forget to unlock it. But I was also checking, it does require flowers in order to pollinate, so we're good. Yes, yes. Pollinate? Pollinate faster. I was hoping that he's going to give us a honeycomb, but apparently not. I moved the apiary storage to the side, and yes, we do have Sudi honeycomb. But that's not the only bee that we want, we need to go and hunt for more. I think that is one of the ones that we're looking for. We're looking for Icy Bee. No, you're Yeti Bee. Explosions. <laughs> we take you anyways. Yes, Icy Bee. You're missing an M. Pneumatic Craft House. That's interesting. It's the first time that I saw one. We take you and the chest. It's essentially a shulker box, so why not? So I'm not going to waste the time of the episode by finding bees, but essentially we are looking for some specific bees. One of them is clockwork, which apparently you can also find it in Snowy Tiger, but the reason that we want it is because it gives you builder's tea, as well as cogwheels and andesite alloy. Also, if I find the bliss, I'll be very happy. So I will do my exploration and I will report back to you at the base. Um, is that an airship? Yeah? It is, and it's made out of quartz. I shouldn't have done that. You look fancy. There are so many redstone stuff here, I don't know if something's gonna explode. Oh, a mana steel is good. From my previous experience with Enigmatica 6, a mushroom biome is the best biome to find weird bees. Cause I did find the clockwork and the Oreo bee inside the mushroom biome. Are you a zombie? What did I tell you? Oreo. No, I'm not gonna eat it. Don't you worry. I know I said I'm not going to waste your time by looking for bees, but would you look at that? This is crazy! Look how big it is! You're a skeleton on a phantom. I don't have any armor and I don't have any torches, but we will come back here later on. Alright guys, it has been a while later and I have been engaged in some bee breeding. A word of advice, if you want to do it inside the room, make sure you don't have these kind of windows. Cause you get a baby bee and they try to escape and whenever they grow, they glitch out, they take damage and well, it's a hassle. The bee breeding that I have to do in order to get general resources, which is something that I want to do, is not very complicated, it's just that you have to give blocks to different bees and you will get a mutated bee. However, in this mod pack, uh, some of them are different. For example, a quartz. If you read the tooltip, it will tell you that within the ICB's crystalline form lies a dormant potential. Ah, the hellish zombie can release it. Well, I did manage to get one, but it took so many attempts that eventually I didn't record it. Basically, this is a hellish zombie and the flower for it is a mushroom. So I put both of them inside, both of them were pollinating and well, the ICB converted into quartz. I personally think that the key is pollination, meaning that a bee has to pollinate another bee. It's very confusing. But from a resource generation perspective, it's actually really nice, even though they have nerfed it. From 18 honeycombs, we got 28 coal chunks which you know, it's like the coal ore. So that is something that I am going to do in the immediate future, trying to get as many bees as possible for resources, try to get another apiary and breed them. But there is one more bee that I want, the blaze bee. Cause if we want to get into power in order to make the blazing crystals, uh, we need the honeycomb. So I'm not exactly sure how we get a blaze bee, but apparently we need the sooty bee, which is coal. And we either need booby, which is big, or glowstone. Uh, the deployer is this guy's flower. Did you convert? <laughs> yes, please be. It's a very good thing that the Enigmatica team has a very active Discord. I have made a second apiary and in total we have 17 bees. I think most of them are sleeping. Are you? I don't know why. It's daytime. Anyways, they are making us general resources like lead, silver, gold, iron, copper, aluminium, and so on and so forth. Also, we get Oreos and wood. But now that we are generating the main resources, it means that I don't have to go mining that much and it also means 
uh, we're getting chunks. You know, I mean, we're basically getting the ore and we have to set up some sort of an ore processing. Create is going to be very bulky, so we're going to go with thermal expansion. We are already generating some power over here using lava, so this should be easy peasy. And of course, I'm going to automate everything using Xnet. We're going to go with four pulverizers, four redstone furnaces, one centrifuge for oil, and by oil, I meant bitumen, and three fractionating steels for processing that oil. That's it, right? Yes. I need to process the oil in order to get refined fuel, because refined fuel from thermal expansion is an acceptable fuel in the liquid compressor from pneumatic craft. Wait a minute. I can buy PCBs? Uh, hello. Yeah, we buy transistors. Do you sell me PCBs? Oh my goodness. It's expensive. Early game, that's going to be very useful. Once we get plastic. Also, we were not here. Obviously. I don't know how to open the door. Okay, our ore processing unit seems to be complete. I also brought the pyrolyzed ovens because, well, I have Fortune 7 on my pickaxe and we get a ton of bitumen. And we need bitumen and heavy oil in order to make refined fuel. But this will last us for a very long time because if we want to go with mechanism, this is the recipe for an enrichment chamber, which is really not gonna happen anytime soon. And the reason that I have a ton of food in my inventory is that I want to empty our inventory management system because, well, we're running out of space. So I'm eating our resources. Well, actually, the reason that I brought you was to show you the result. So this is one chest, this is the second chest, and we also have a shulker box. It's really good because we're also getting a ton of sulfur. So it's not great, but it's also not that terrible. I'm relatively happy. We are producing all the basic resources and we're producing so much that my inventory system does not have any more storage. Either I have to expand it, which is not something that I really want to do, or we have to spend the resources. That is something that I want to do. And our next project is actually going to be incredibly resource intensive because what we want is plastic sheets from pneumatic craft. I have been contemplating should I go with biodiesel, should we go with LPG and make the refinery, and I'm still thinking about it. You might tell me that Lush, this is not even a question, you have to go with a refinery because you need diesel in order to make lubricant. Ah, and you need lubricant in order to make speed upgrades. That is very true, and you're absolutely right. However, in this mod pack, in addition to needing lubricant, I also need glycerol. I can buy lubricant from Amadron tablet, I cannot buy glycerol. And that is a byproduct of biodiesel, so this is why I'm confused. Making biodiesel from pneumatic crap is relatively easy because, well, uh, vegetable oil is just this. You put whatever you want inside the thermo pneumatic processing plant and you get vegetable oil. The tricky part for me at this very moment is ethanol. Because I cannot go with the immersive engineering version, we need the schematic, and I need yeast, which comes from mushroom. Or maybe not, because there is a way. Uh, can I make a fluid placer? And I can also make a fluid collector. That can work. So let us get started. I have a lot of crafting to do. Okay, so the refinery controller was the worst recipe until today. And all of that because of the superheating element. So everything is easy peasy, we have already made the kiln, but this heat pipe, it made me go nuts, uh, you need like 20 different colors. We might be missing two or three thermonumatic processing plants, but one of the most important things in making biodiesel is the mixer. Cause you know, you literally make biodiesel inside it. Wait a minute, so if I'm making biodiesel, why did I make the refinery? I guess I'm sleepy. I was going to say that we need a mixer, and the mixer needs a turbine rotor. Which, guess what? You need a pressure chamber. Yes, exactly. You need a pressure chamber. I don't. We need three. Thank you. Uh, we also take some pipes. You just gave me the quest. Awesome. I'm still confused why did I make that stupid refinery. I mean, we had to make it anyways, but definitely not today. Okay, so I have been trying to understand how the process actually works, and yes, we can make yeast, and it's relatively easy. The only problem is the temperature has to be between 30 and 60 degrees Celsius, which is really not something easy that you can keep with a vortex tube, because that will go to like 500 degrees. I tried various methods, and it seems that if you put a campfire and cover some of the size of the thermonumatic processing plant so that the heat does not dissipate, uh, we can keep it stable. Because of the temperature requirement and also the fact that we need mushrooms in order to make yeast, I was planning to make a pool of water and spread the yeast using sugar. The problem is that it's not very consistent. And I do not have a very easy method of detecting whenever the water is converted into yeast or not. Because I don't think if we convert you into a fluid collector, you will have a filter. 
Yeah, you don't. But the temperature requirement, we have to observe it in order to make ethanol anyways, so maybe we just use thermonumatic processing plants. And we don't make a pool. And considering the fact that we have Xnet over here and we are producing refined fuel over here, uh, maybe we set up our plastic factory here? I don't know, let me try to make something and I'll be right back. Yes, finally we have biodiesel. I have a thermonumatic processing plant which is taking water and mushroom and is making us yeast. Yeast goes inside another thermonumatic processing plant, we mix it with sugar and we will get ethanol. And these guys are the ones which have to be heated by a campfire so that the temperature does not reach 60 degrees. I have another thermonumatic processing plant which is just converting seeds. Well, I'm using wheat seeds at this very moment, but essentially any seed. And it's making vegetable oil. Ethanol and vegetable oil go inside a mixer and we get glycerol and biodiesel. You might think that we are done in new. <laughs> we need to take that biodiesel, put it inside another thermonumatic processing plant, give it some air pressure, and I think you need heat. Yeah, and by heat, I actually meant something more than a campfire. So, vortex tube, you also need air pressure. And ladies and gentlemen, plastic. Um, do you need a heat sink? Maybe not. It's not even fully automated yet, but I will work on it. We also need a mechanism to turn these guys off so that they don't waste fuel. But I think we can just take out the plastic and put it down. Yes, plastic sheets. This is so nice. Uh, let us get four. Thank you, thank you. And if we purchase a PCB from you, thank you. Can I make advanced PCB? No. Uh, what was the rest? Oh, redstone. And with the redstone, we get four advanced PCBs. You have no idea how much time this saves. Because otherwise, I had to go this route, and this is not really good. For the moment, I don't need that many PCBs, so this system is actually going to work, but later on, we need to automate it using the assembly line. Also, I have checked, it seems we cannot cool down plastic on its own. So what we have to do is that we need to convert it into a bucket, put it inside the chest, and use a heat frame on the chest. Temperature is not very good. It's fine. What if I use a heat sink? Oh! It's good. So basically what I have to do is to put the molten plastic inside the bucket, put the bucket inside the chest, and then take the bucket out and rinse and repeat. It is finally done and I'm relatively happy with this. We should be able to cover everything because nothing exceeds this block. I can just put trap doors and you will not see a thing. Just to clarify, it's not fully automatic yet because I haven't decided what kind of mushrooms we are going to use, how are we going to get sugar, or what kind of vegetable I'm going to juice. So for the moment, we are going to give the ingredients manually, but essentially, it's automatic. If we give you charcoal, we get plastic. Each time we are going to get one bucket, that bucket goes inside this chest. It will get cooled down into plastic, the empty bucket goes back inside the fluid encapsulator, and gets filled again. Also, I do have a comparator over here, so that whenever this guy gets full, which now that I see the buckets, it's not a very good idea, I wanted to be able to turn these guys off. You know, so that we don't waste fuel. Well, I can reduce the number of buckets and extend the redstone line. That's something that I will do. Do not be worried. The important thing is, we're getting plastic. I am actually super excited about plastic because with plastic, we can make a solar panel. Yes, I do understand that the solar panels from power are essentially garbage, especially the tier 1, but for some reason they buffed this. It generates 880 RF per tick. Dynamos that I have, each one of them makes 40. So this is amazing. And it's not that expensive anymore. And now that we have plastic, we can easily make capacitors. I have been claiming some of the rewards and for some reason this one was not counting. Oh, you have a dependency. Air compressor. Ah, you need a pressure gauge. Okay, so are we good? Yes. You still didn't count. Ah, yes, because I need to have LPG. I also wanted to dedicate the rest of the episode in making the schematics, which we talked about last episode, the medium machinery schematics, but I think we should get into power. Because, you know, these guys are incredibly resource intensive, and if we have more power, well, we can make the resources faster. I think the first item that we have to start making is the energizing ore. We also need some ceramics, and it's not a very complicated recipe, we just need marl. Which has to be cooked, so I don't know, you get half a stack, you get the other half. I should really empty these guys. I don't have space. Black ceramic, we get the slabs, and we just need this recipe once, crystal glass. Uh, crystal glass comes from ghostly glass, nature's aura. A oh, bottle and a cork? Uh, what is a cork? I have never played with this mod, I'm so confused. So we just right click. Oh, that was easy. Then let me get the ingredients and I'll be right back. Also, one more thing that I wanted to mention is that in order to make this glass, we need something from Quark, which is called Corundum. 
When I go mining, I try to mark everything of interest. I did manage to find two caves. I wanted to show you it's white. Actually, let's take all the pearls. And I'm assuming some food? You know, I'm actually one of the most dangerous creatures in this world because I kill myself more than any other mob. You see, I'm almost dead again. And I'm out of berries. Oh, I have this. Can I pearl? Yes. Yes, very good. Uh, I wanted to show you it's white. If I have not messed up the recipe, this should work. Only one way to find out. Will you make it? That's passed. Energizing orb. Although I think based on the quest, yeah, we needed to make the paste. Which is not that bad. I need a few blaze cakes, but that's it. Your recipe has not been changed, right? Yes. I'm not going to automate the production of blaze cake at this very moment, we're going to make a few of them manually. But later on when we get to the chromatic compound, well, we kind of have to do that. That's probably more than enough. So we're going to have a depot, one block gap, the spout, some mechanical pipes, and I believe if we put the tank, we should be able to extract it. Yes, perfect. Not the dirt. Do the cake. Yes, perfect. I was making more cake bases. Are they ready? Yeah, 24. So how the hell do we make you? It's just sand, silicon and tar. Out of everything that we should have, I'm missing sand. So let us try if it works. Here is tar, here is sand and here is silicon. And here is your cake. Yes, we're getting the paste. Oh, you're done? Each recipe gives you 24. That's really good. I think for the moment, we have a decent number. Okay, now we need to make the capacitor and we come to our temporary setup, which has been here for the past five episodes, so maybe we should start making it more permanent. So if I drop plastic, will you work? Yes. Oh, but you get stuck. Okay, I am very confused. Uh, why don't you work? <laughs> I really don't get it. Yeah, I figured out why it's not working. Uh, the fourth one has to be a press. I missed it. It's just that the press is very slow. Just for one second, I thought we were screwed because this is a block of quartz enriched iron. I thought you need to make it in a pressure chamber, but apparently not. So just in short, we're not screwed. Okay, maybe we are. We need etching acid. Ah, uh, yes. We need to make a pressure chamber. Well, theoretically speaking, we don't have to make a pressure chamber because we already made all the parts last episode, but we need to assemble it. Output, then it should output to here. The reason that I want the etching acid is because in order to make the energizing rod, well, we are going to need the Tesla coil, which requires HV capacitor, MV capacitor, LV capacitor, and that one requires a bucket of etching acid. So I need eight buckets just to make one rod. So this is getting pressure, that is good. We can also set you to high redstone signal, so that we can extract the items with just the lever. So this guy is our input, we are going to put a hopper here, two spider eyes, two rotten flesh, two gunpowder, and one bucket of plastic. Here we put the lever and the chest. I should have put glass, but we should be able to hear it. Yes, it's ready. I can't get it out. <laughs> oh, you're exporting. Yeah, you should be on the other side. It's fine. Yes, I had to break it, but we did manage to get one bucket. I have to do this eight times. And that was my bad. Actually, I just realized, unlike the previous versions, you don't need to have a filter, you can just configure it here. It will only export crafted items. That's a very nice change. One more bucket? Also, the campfires were disabled by the thermonomatic processing plant, so I had to light them again. That's not a huge deal, we can do this with a dispenser, that should last for a very long time. After a bunch of, in my opinion, needless crafting, here is an energizing rod. That was expensive, and it's not even a quest. Oh, there is a quest for it. Because in order to make the casing itself, you actually need to have the energizing orb because you need energized steel. And do you remember last episode I said we have to go to Undergarden in order to find this guy? The frost steel? That's why. This is actually a very important step for us. Wait a minute. Why don't you work? Oh, it's Electrum. It's not gold. I was going to say that this is a very huge moment for us because we will have access to nice power and I would be able to have a decent machine room. Not like this. So we need some of these horizontal rods, some vertical rods, and do not be worried about these guys, uh, these are just ceramics. But with all of those, here is our casing. Very nice, we get two more. And now I should be able to make the solar panel. We just need 12 of you. Oh, this is a special glass? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's the same kind of glass, it's just panes. There you go. Oh, they don't stack. Do you actually make 800 RF per tick? It's 1000. Wow. 
Some of you might argue that a reactor would have been a much better option, and yes, maybe this is something that we can make, but the good thing about solar panels is that they're mobile, meaning that if I don't need it here, I can just move it over there, or wherever I want. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.